In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, empty and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, orchestrating the perfectly timed moment for creation to be birthed from his lips. He spoke to the dark with the infamous words that echo through eternity. Let there be light. Light burst forth, erasing darkness and bringing warmth. A peace that silenced chaos and brought into form. Just a whisper and a thousand billion galaxies were born. The vapor of his breath, the planets formed. Every painted sky, a canvas of his grace. From branches he assembled trees, fashioned running streams, Lights beaming, animals flying, swimming, and breathing. Everywhere, their beauty and color, an awesome wonder. And God created man and woman in his image, the pinnacle of his creation. He's beloved to love his beloved world and light up his creation. And as man and woman walked with God in the cool of the garden, there was blessing upon blessing. It was perfect. But this beauty was taken for granted. Man became colorblind to beauty and turned away from God. We went astray and the cause of sin came into creation. Where there was fullness, lack took its place. Joy turned to misery and peace to chaos. Sin became like thick black glasses, blinding us from the light. The stream ran empty and around was drought and plague. So we fell on our knees and started to pray. Another murder has taken place in the last few weeks, which leaves us questioning how many more are to come. Police are asking for any information regarding a missing girl who was on her way home from work, last seen walking through the park in the dark hours. It seems that there's more corruption in government, as the latest investigation finds an overwhelming amount of evidence into the financial dealings of MPs. And it is with fear and confusion that we find ourselves with war once again on our doorstep. The droughts in areas across the world have left families with no food and no income, causing them to flee their homes. A global health emergency has now been declared. The cost of living soars and energy prices are at an all-time high. The extent of the mental health crisis is at a terrifying level. 50 million people living in modern-day slavery across the globe. 698 million people are living in extreme poverty.
In the middle of the darkness, once again, a great light broke all fear and all dismay. A whisper of his ushering in, his hope, his truth, and his promise. His rescue from darkness to light, death to life. Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone, everywhere, the savior of our broken world, born to die for our sin, our rescue. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a story of hope and the government will be upon his shoulders. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His name is Jesus, Light of the World. Sweet child, to all who see and believe, they will glimmer and shine in his everlasting glory. His light that is within you will brighten the darkest of days, like a city on a hilltop that can never be hidden away. So therefore, my dear, light up this world, love with his love, the way he did, and shine for all to see. you cheer them one more time they're incredible our teenagers and our children are incredible they've done an amazing job and we 
We can't wait to celebrate Jesus this evening. We've already started. He is why we're here. We're here to celebrate Christmas. We're here to celebrate Jesus coming to earth. And we would love to welcome you to church this evening. If it's your first time or you come all the time, it is wonderful to have you here. But we're gonna get into worship. So why don't you stand to your feet and we're gonna sing some carols. We're gonna sing some songs that declare who Jesus is. Now, I don't know what you know about Jesus, but, or whether you know Him really well or you've been invited by someone, but we believe that Jesus is gonna meet you this evening. He's gonna come and speak to you. He's gonna come and meet you. So where you're at, if you feel comfortable, just put your hands out, like you're ready to receive the best gift ever. Jesus, we thank You. We thank You that we get to celebrate You. We thank You for the gift that You are. We thank You that You chose to step down from glory to come and walk among us. And Lord, this evening we want You to be glorified. We wanna worship You, King Jesus. It's all about You, King Jesus. We love You. Amen.
bondage for our King. And joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Come on. And heaven.
of his love and what is of his love and what is what is of
your presence I wanna know you I love you I give you my worship And all of my passion I give An old little town of Bethlehem How still we see the light Above thy deep and dreamlessly The silent stars go by Yet in the dark Shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in the For Christ is born. Of Mary and gathered all above While mortals sleep The angels keep their watch of wandering love O morning stars together Proclaim the holy birth and praise sing to God the King and peace to men on earth. And how silently, how silently. The wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of His hand. No ear may hear His coming, but in this world. When meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ answers. O oh, holy child, and O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and dancer in a be born. 
for each and every person here that you would bless us Lord that you would show us who you truly are we welcome you Holy Spirit in this place and I ask Holy Spirit that you would reveal Jesus the Son to each and every one of us Lord if we know him Lord that we would see him more And Lord, if we're here tonight and we don't know who you are, Lord, I pray that we would see how wonderful you are. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. See, normally when I preach in the morning, people wait before they sit down, but wow, good church. You sat down, you knew it was the moment. If you're visiting tonight and you haven't been to Chroma Church before, you are so welcome. My name is Juliet. My husband Steve is down on the front row there. We uh, lead the church with a wonderful, wonderful team of people. You saw them in different places, dancing and singing. We're talking tonight about Jesus, the light of the world. Um, You know, we saw this 
beautiful, amazing production at the beginning, the dance. It was incredible, wasn't it? It was so powerful to see the children and the teenagers tell the story of God and the story of Jesus. And they beautifully, through dance and videos, told the story of God as the Creator God, a loving Father who created the world and everything in it. And He saw that it was good and He saw that it was perfect. And He created the man and the woman to know Him and to love Him, to live in relationship with Him, to rule and steward the earth with Him. And it was perfect. And we told that story. Some of you might know it, some of you it might be new to you. But we also told the story of how humanity, the first man and woman, listened to the voice of the devil who persuaded them through temptation to turn away from the loving hand of the Father, to disobey God and to follow Him and do their own thing, to go their own way. And humanity has been doing that ever since. See, it was at that point, at the beginning of creation, that sin and death and destruction and sickness and evil entered our world. And we saw that in the story as they wore the black garment and they took on a different form in their dance. But then we also told the story of the promise for all time from the beginning of creation, the relentless love of the Father, the Creator, God, pursuing humanity through all of time to bring us back into a relationship with Him. He promised that He would come, that He would send the Messiah, that He would send His Son to redeem a fallen, broken creation, to bring light into the darkness. And we say, Jesus is the light of the world. And that's why we say it. Because from the beginning of creation, God promised that He would redeem the brokenness, redeem the darkness, and He sent His Son to do it. You know, as Christians, we love to tell the story of Jesus at Christmas. We love to tell it all year round, but we particularly at Christmas love to tell the story of the birth of Jesus and everything that happened when the Messiah came. And you know, there's lots of different themes that we emphasise at at Christmas and you might have seen some of those. Sometimes we talk about Jesus as the hope of the world. Sometimes we talk about Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. Sometimes we talk about Jesus as the good news, the good news in the bad news. But we knew this year as we prayed as a staff team and we pondered over what it should be, we knew this year that we should emphasise Jesus as the light of the world. Because it feels like, I don't know if you feel it, but it feels like it's been a particularly dark time for humanity. There are always difficulties, there are always troubles, but in the last few years, it's felt really intense, like thing after thing after thing, darkness, trouble, suffering. And it's nothing new in humanity and it's nothing new in history, but it has felt intense in the last few years. So we knew we had to talk about Jesus, who is the light of the world. Now I'm, I'm 50 years old. I would love you to tell me that I don't look it, but obviously this is not a pantomime where you shout back, but <laughs> 50 years old. And in my 50 years old, 50 years, 50 years of time, I've seen lots of different seasons of trouble and darkness through my history. Intense seasons are not so intense, but nothing quite like we're experiencing now. I do remember though, as a child, there was a similar sort of time. I remember that there was uh, strikes and a financial crisis that hit and and we had to have candles. And does anybody else remember this? Are you old enough to remember the candles? Because we used to have blackouts because there were strikes and, and the lights would go out, darkness. And there was, there was violence erupting in Ireland in a significant way. There was, there was uh, wars, rumours of wars. There was talk of a nuclear war. And I remember my mum wearing her Greenpeace t-shirt and, you know, she was a hippie and it was like all peace and uh, world peace. And, and this was the threat of nuclear war from Russia. Darkness is nothing new, you know. 
and there was a financial crisis and there was political struggles. All of this I remember as a child. And I remember bits of it growing up and bits of it in my 20s and 30s and 40s. But this last few years has been an intense season of trouble and hardship and darkness. It started with COVID, didn't it? Sickness and suffering en masse and lockdown and all of the stuff that came from that. And then we see a financial crisis and now we have an energy crisis and we have a war in Ukraine. And again, we have this threat of nuclear evil. Darkness is nothing new. So we knew we had to talk about Jesus as the light of the world because with this intensity of darkness, we believe as Christians there is an intensity to invite you to turn your face towards Jesus who is the light of the world, who is the Redeemer of a fallen, broken creation. And we read tonight as we did our little uh, dance, we read from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 9, a passage of Scripture that people often love to read at Christmas. It's, it's very popular to read at Christmas. But you know, Isaiah, seven years, 700 years before, Jesus prophesied to a people who were living in darkness, to a people who were struggling with the same old, same old, to a people who were living with the threat of violence and exile and trouble and hardship, darkness and they knew that much of it was because they'd sinned and turned away from God they knew that much of it was the consequence of them not listening to their father and following his way but doing their own thing they knew it and they were in darkness but God's redeeming love always comes to us in that dark place. And so Isaiah, the prophet, he stood in the midst of all this and he said this, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of, on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. See, he was prophesying to them about the redemption of a, a loving father, that the light would come. And they would see some of that in their lifetime and the generations that would come. There would be a promise of, of some redemption for them. But He was also calling them to look ahead to the ultimate promise that God had given that He would redeem humanity through sending the Messiah. And He was saying, the light will come in the darkness. And He was comforting God's people at this time. And He went on and He said this, this promise, he said, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This was the promise about Jesus, light in the darkness. And it's amazing to think that 700 years before Jesus, the prophet foresaw this. The prophet knew that this would happen and he told them to be encouraged to look ahead. But it's even more amazing that we, 2,000 years after Jesus, can look back to the fulfilment of that promise because He did come. It's been fulfilled, this promise. It's amazing. God knew that He would redeem His fallen, broken creation. He had a plan from the beginning. He is a loving Father. Light in the darkness would come. But even though it had been promised since the beginning, even though it had been promised over and over again, unto us a child is born, no one really expected the Messiah to come as a baby born in a stable. No one really expected that to happen. But you see, God's plan was absolutely perfect because the Messiah had to come as a baby, perfect God and man, created to redeem humanity, born perfect, born to live from the moment He was born, a sinless life so that He could atone for our sin. You see, He was perfect because we are not perfect. You see, part of God's redeeming love through the history of God's people had been that He'd made provision as He'd reached out to them time and time again. And one of the ways He'd done that in the old covenant 
was to say that the high priest could come into the temple with a spotless, pure baby lamb and atone for the sin, the darkness of humanity. And so when Jesus came as a baby, perfect because we are not, He was to be the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world, the one who would go to the cross and take all of our sin upon His shoulders, perfect because we are not. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God but all can be justified freely through His grace. I'm gonna say it again later. God's plan for a fallen, broken world, the darkness, the light, Jesus was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. When you have a newborn baby, if anybody here has had one, some of you I know are too young to have had a baby. But when you have your first child, you absolutely think they're perfect. I mean, nobody can tell you they're not perfect. Your child is the perfect child. Honestly, they can do no wrong, no matter what anybody says about them. Initially, obviously as they grow up, but initially they're like perfect, absolutely perfect. And I remember when my son was born, I was like, he is perfect, he is beautiful. But I remember the first time I discovered that he was not in fact perfect. I found him behind the sofa, eating a chocolate Easter egg. He wasn't even one, he was crawling, not walking. And he'd found this chocolate Easter egg and he was eating the chocolate Easter egg and the wrapper and the paper all in one go. And it was all smeared around his face. And I thought to myself, this is amazing because you're not even one yet, but you knew that you weren't allowed to have that and you knew it was wrong So you actually crawled behind the sofa to eat that chocolate. Now we Christians call that original sin. He was hiding it. He knew it was wrong and he was hiding it. Now a few months before that, at Christmas, he had consumed almost the entire flowering plant of my poinsettia plant for Christmas and he'd done it in in the lounge in full view of everybody but I wasn't in there and I'd come in and he'd eaten all this in full view you know children they can't really hide the naughty things they do but they quickly learn that's my point you know in that few months he learned that he needed to go behind the sofa and hide the naughty thing that he did you know as adults as we grow up we begin to hide our sin We start to even say that it's not really sin. We're not really doing naughty things. It's like, it's my choice. I'm just doing what I want. I'm just doing it my way. There's a singer, Frank Sinatra, who sang about, I did it my way, not in tune at all. But that's, you know, doing it my way has not gone very well for the world. The result of doing it my way is actually an increase of darkness. It's an increase of darkness. You know, sin is not just doing naughty things. Sin is actually what happened at the beginning at creation when the first man and woman turned away from God towards the devil and did their own thing. Sin is actually what it means to do it by myself, to do it my way, to do it on my own without God. And the result of that is darkness and brokenness and emptiness and aloneness. But God provided us a, for us a way to know Him again, to love Him, to be redeemed from that darkness and His name is Jesus. And this was the promise. And Jesus was promised to be the light of the world because Isaiah said, the government will be on his shoulders. The government will be on his shoulders. That's really interesting, isn't it? He is light in the darkness because the government will be on his shoulders. Well, thank God for that. Thank God 
the government will rest on his shoulders. Is there anybody here who hasn't felt a little bit disappointed with the government recently? Just a little bit. Or ruling authorities. You know, as Christians, we know that we're to pray for our leaders and we're to honour our leaders, but we can be real about the disappointments. Not only in this country, but as we look across the world, it feels like one almighty breakdown of rulers and authorities. But you know, humanity was never meant to rule apart from God. There is only one who rules with righteousness and justice. And He is the King who sits on a heavenly throne. And we were created to know Him and to rule with Him. Without Him, it's just more darkness. And until we understand that, there will be just more darkness. But in Him and through Him and with Him, we too will rule creation or can rule creation with righteousness and justice. But there is only one who is worthy. And His name is Jesus and the government is upon His shoulders. So when Jesus was born, the Kingdom of God came crashing into our world, heaven to earth. And it has been increasing and increasing and increasing. The Bible says His Kingdom has come and it's coming and it will come and it's increasing light in the darkness. Jesus is the King and the Kingdom is coming in Him and His church and His people and the government rests on His shoulders, light in the darkness. And He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Wonderful One, that's His name, Jesus the Wonderful One. You know, when Jesus were, was born, there were signs and wonders all around His birth. The angel Gabriel came to the Virgin Mary, a teenager, and he, he said to her, you will become pregnant with God's own Son. The power of the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And she was, even though she was a virgin, it was a sign and a wonder, a sign that God the King was coming to live with His people, Emmanuel. And Joseph, who was betrothed to marry her, was afraid and concerned and rightly so. But then an angel also appeared to him in a dream and told him that this was the Messiah, that it was gonna be okay. And he trusted a sign and a wonder that Jesus was something special, someone special. And then when Mary went to visit her relative Elizabeth, Elizabeth also had experienced a miracle. She was older in years and barren, but she, had, she was pregnant by a miracle of God, pregnant with the prophet John the Baptist, who would foretell about Jesus, who would make way for Jesus. And as Mary walked into the room, the, the, the baby in her womb leapt signs and wonders. And the shepherds who were out tending the flocks saw an angel and the angel told them that the Messiah King was being born and they should go to Bethlehem. And three wise men heard the same sound. They also went to Bethlehem to see the king, travelled far with, with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, a sign and a wonder, a sign that this was the Son of God, God and man. And people knew there was a smattering of noise because people knew that there's something different about what's happening with Jesus. Could He be the Messiah? Those who had eyes to see knew. And others rejected it. Herod, the evil king, was so angry. He got so afraid that he killed all the baby boys he could possibly find. He was terrified. Signs and wonders, the king had come. And as Jesus was taken into the temple as a baby, Simeon and Anna, the prophets who had prayed and prayed and prayed that they would see the Messiah, that they would see the light come to the darkness. And when Jesus came into the temple, Simeon said, my eyes have seen the one, the Messiah, light in the darkness. Signs and wonders surrounded the birth of Jesus because He 
is, was and always will be the wonderful one, the wonderful counsellor. And as he grew into a man, signs and wonders began to follow Jesus. He would put his hands on people and they would get well. The deaf would hear and the blind would see and the good news was preached to the poor and the lame began to walk and the dead were even raised and he walked on water and he calmed a storm and he he delivered people from the torment of demons. Signs and wonders, signs and wonders, the wonderful one, wonderful Jesus. And people knew something is really special about Jesus. And you know, just as the signs and wonders were normal for Jesus, so they are to be normal for His church. The people who have turned towards Jesus, who have given Jesus their life, they also bring this light. You know, if I was to open up the mic here, and say, come and, tell, come and tell everybody about wonderful Jesus, the wonderful counsellor. There would literally be a queue of people who wanted to tell you their story about wonderful Jesus in their life. There's a man in our church called Richard Gamble who's building a wall. It's an architecture that's gonna be built in Birmingham, a wall of answered prayer. It's a huge, huge architecture that's gonna be full of bricks and in every single brick, there will be an answered prayer, signs and wonders, Jesus, the light of the world. I could tell you the story of a young woman who came into our revival prayer here. We meet in here on a Tuesday night. She's only 16 years old. And she came and she told the story of how she had given her life to Jesus weeks before. And she said as she gave her life to Jesus, she felt this warmth like a fire inside her as the Holy Spirit made home within her. And she knew that she was loved by God. And she said, I'm just changed and I'm just full of joy. And then she said she went to her auntie's house and her auntie was sick and her auntie had pain in her stomach and a lump in her stomach and she knew she had to pray for her auntie and she put her hands on her auntie's stomach and her auntie was instantly healed. The lump went, the pain went and on Sunday she came to church, this auntie, and she also came forward and gave her life to Jesus. And a couple of weeks ago they came here, they were baptised and they stood up and they told the story of wonderful Jesus. He is wonderful. He is the light of the world. One of our young women who is a student doctor, she came into the children's ministry a few months ago and she had a swollen ankle and she went in limping. What a trooper, still doing Sunday school. She went in limping and um, there was a little girl there who was not yet two. And she began to talk about how she could hear singing. And some of the workers there realised that what she was describing was the sound of angel song. And they said to her to put her hand on this woman's ankle and pray for healing. And this little girl, not yet two, she put her hand on this woman's ankle and the pain instantly went and the swelling went down. And instead of limping out, she walked out and that night she was here at church and she was dancing. And she told the story, she got up and told the story of wonderful Jesus. You know, a few months ago, my husband and I and some of our worshippers here had the privilege of going to the bedside of a man whose body was riddled with cancer. But he loved Jesus. And just because his body was riddled with cancer, it didn't make any difference to his love for Jesus, the wonderful one. He knew him as his wonderful Lord right there and then. And he asked that we would come in and worship with him in his final days. It was such a privilege. And this man, he, as we came in, he looked at us and he gave us this big hug and a big smile. His body was riddled with cancer, struggling with cancer. But you see, for the Christian, cancer, sickness is never our story because Jesus is our story. And the glory of the Lord filled that room and He worshipped with us and His his wife and His sisters told us that as He passed from this life into glory, death had no sting. That's what the Bible says, you see. Christians know where they're going. And even though He had suffered greatly, they said He died in peace and in the glory of the Lord. That's a miracle. That's a sign and a wonder. He is wonderful, wonderful. 
Jesus, wonderful Jesus. And the promise finishes with this. He is also mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is mighty God. You see, from the beginning of creation, God had this plan. He was a loving Father. He is a loving, good Father. He had this plan to send His Son to redeem a fallen, broken creation. Jesus said, for God so loved the world, He sent His Son. It wasn't to condemn the world or to judge the world, but to rescue the world through Him. God had a plan, a big Father plan to redeem creation, to bring absolute light in the darkness. But it wasn't to come by force. It wasn't to pull us back or force us back. It was the perfect Father's love. Because what Jesus would do was to live a sinless life. He would display His might, bring His light in the ultimate darkness of sin and death and destruction by suffering and going to the cross and dying there and on His shoulders, He took every sin, every darkness that ever was and ever will be for those who come into a relationship with the Lordship of Jesus. He did it all. He is mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, because as He died, so also He rose again as the power of the Holy Spirit came upon Him. He came to new life, resurrection life and is seated at the right hand of the Father on the throne in glory so that all of those who give their lives to Jesus can become children of the loving Father and have peace with God just as it was in creation to know God and to be known by God, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is the light of the world. And you know, as the children came in, they bought their little lanterns as a sign and a symbol to you to show you that as we turn our face towards Jesus, we can come out of darkness into His glorious light as we look on the face of Jesus and live in a relationship with Him. We may be living in a season of great darkness and intense darkness, but as we turn our face towards Jesus, we can live as children of the light. And you know, as I was preparing this message, I just kept thinking about reading this passage of Isaiah over and over again. I just kept thinking about the old hymn. Some of you might know it. Just one little chorus goes like this. Turn your eyes towards Jesus. Look full at His wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. You know, I remember the first time I turned my eyes towards Jesus. I was sitting on a bus. I was 20 years old. It was 30 years ago. I remember it as clear as if it happened yesterday. I was 20 years old and I would describe myself as exhausted, so tired and a 20 year old shouldn't feel tired but I just felt this empty void and I knew that what I was doing was not working. I felt that I was living in the drudge of an endless darkness and I couldn't understand why. And as I sat on a bus coming home from town, it was as if everything slowed down, but actually it was really fast. I remember all the emotions. I remember this emotion welling up inside of me and I know now what I didn't understand then, that God, the Holy Spirit came close to me, came near to me and touched me with the Father's love and I felt this wave of emotion. And as I turned towards a church that I'd gone into a few times as a child, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Nobody talked about God at home. Um, but a few Christians had taken me to church when I was a child. I turned towards this church and I just started to cry. And I said, I miss you, God. 
I didn't know where to find him. It was like, I know you're real. I know you've been there. I know you're, I feel something, some void, some longing. And within days, having prayed that prayer, I didn't even think of it as a prayer at the time, but within days, the mighty, everlasting, loving Father answered my prayer. I was literally surrounded by Christians. I didn't even know it. A whole bunch of my friends were Christians. They'd never told me they were Christians. And we began to talk about God and they invited me to church. And very quickly, I turned towards Jesus. I gave Him my life and I have never looked back. His redeeming love is what Christmas is all about. And this is the light in the darkness. And one of the things that we do here week in, week out, is we invite people to turn towards Jesus. We invite people to give their lives to Jesus, to come out of the darkness into His glorious light. And we want to give you that opportunity tonight. I want to ask if everybody would stand with me. I know many of you here tonight, you would call yourselves Christians, but some of you may have come with friends or loved ones. You may have been dragged. You may have come willingly. Friends, family, neighbours, work colleagues. You may be here tonight because you you saw that this was happening and you're feeling sort of similar to how I was feeling, sitting on that bus like something's missing. I know that I need God. I don't know where to find God, but you've come knowing that you want to take a step. You may be here tonight and you may be somebody who would have called yourself a Christian a long time ago. Maybe you gave your life to Jesus as a child or a teenager, but you know there's been a long in between and you want to come home. You want to come back to Jesus. If anything else I've said, have, I haven't said that you're feeling, you know you want to come to Jesus, you want to give your life to Jesus. I want to invite you, we want to invite you to come down the front and do that. Now I know it's scary to come to the front, but you see Jesus, He's the Lord, He's the King, and He is worthy of us taking that step towards Him boldly. You have a beautiful name. You're so welcome. Wow. You just stand here for a minute. Is there anybody else tonight? who would like to give their life to Jesus or come home. I know it's scary to come to the front. You might be thinking, oh, I wanna do it on my own in my bedroom. You can, but it's better if you do it in front of everybody because you never look back. And the thing that happens is it's like your heart's going bang And that's a sign you need to come down to the front. So I'm just gonna wait a moment because this is so important. You know you need to give your life to Jesus. You know you need to do it now. Thank you for waiting. We're gonna pray for you in a minute. I just want to say something. You know, at the beginning, when all the children were dancing and all the teenagers were dancing, it was like an amazing display of God's family. You know, here, whether we know each other or not, whatever our backgrounds, whatever our age, as Christians, we're family. It doesn't mean we have no family, like family as in blood family, but we also have a Christian family. 
the family that we walk with week in, week out. And I think there are people here tonight and your family, it's just rubbish. It's really heartbreaking, your family situation. And I just want to say to you, the answer in that situation is to come to Jesus and come into the family of God to find the love of the Father, but also to receive the love of this community, to be part of a family. So I'm just gonna ask one more time, because I want to give you a chance. If that's you, come down to the front and give your life to Jesus. Come into the family. I know you might be feeling, some of you like, this is really uncomfortable, but I'm just feeling the Lord prompt me to just wait, wait. The thing is, people need time to make this decision. And there are people here really thinking, really wondering, and they're gonna go home tonight and they're gonna think some more. And it's important that people take that journey. And we meet here week in, week out on a Sunday morning and you can come and give your life to Jesus at any time. We're gonna pray for this young lady. The Lord is all over you. Yeah. Why don't you just close your eyes? Okay, we're gonna pray a prayer together with this lady. We're all gonna say it together and I want you to repeat after me, okay? Lord Jesus, We're going to do that one more time. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my heart. And I ask that you come and make your home in me. I want to follow you all the days of my life. I ask that you forgive me for going my own way and all the things that I've done. Wash me clean. I ask that you would fill me Holy Spirit. And I say to you, Jesus, from this day on, I will love you forever. And I ask that you would teach me how to love you more. Amen. Would you just put your hands out towards her? We're going to pray. I thank you so much for this one, Lord. She is so precious to you. I thank you, Lord, that you are healing her right now. Lord, that there are things that only you know and only you see in her life. And Lord, you reach back a new healer, you are our healer. And I pray healing over you in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask that you would heal her body, mind and spirit. And Lord, I pray that she would be moved right now into your glorious light, that she would see you and know you as her loving, good Father. I pray you would bless her life. I pray you would bless her steps. And Lord, that she would know you more than she could dream or imagine at this moment. Flood her life with your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to um, finish with worship. You're going to need to put your dancing shoes on. But, but first, I want to pray for every single person here. I, um, you may have come with different needs, um, different prayers. Some of you may be sick. Uh, some of you may be in financial need. Some of you may be in relational need. 
I want to pray for you. We've seen so many wonderful miracles here over the last few months. So this, now it's not a long prayer. In fact, the longest prayer that Jesus prayed was come forth when He rose Lazarus from the dead. Normally it was just see, hear. <clears throat> if you've got financial problems, put your hand on your wallet. If you're um, in relational difficulty, put your hand on your heart. Okay, and if you're sick in any way, put your hand where it hurts. Okay, and we're going to pray. Lord, I thank You for this group of people. I thank You that You are indeed Lord. You're walking amongst us now. And I pray, Jesus, that You would heal our bodies. You came healing and saving the lost. So Lord, we pray that sickness and pain would leave our bodies in the Name of Jesus Christ. You came with the good news for the poor. And Lord, if there are people in financial needs, I pray for financial miracles. Lord, I pray that You would provide miraculously for them, amaze them this week as we go into the Christmas period. And Lord, if people have, have fallen out, if people are, are broken relationally, Lord, I pray You would put forgiveness in our hearts, that just the way You have forgiven us, we would forgive others. And that, Lord, we would be able to stretch out that hand of love because You came to be the light of the world and now You are in us and we are now the light to the world. So, Lord, we, we take this light this light of Your love wherever we go. And so I pray that families and relationships would be healed in the Name of Jesus and the whole church together gave a great Amen. So, are you ready to, to worship, to sing, to dance? There's some space, there's some space here. Move into the space. Here we go.
Jesus and it's been so fun to do this Christmas service with you guys on your seat you will see a little flyer which tells you some more about some of our other Christmas services and we would love you to come along there is offering baskets on the door if you want to give your offering but guys Merry Christmas there is Christmas treats out there have a wonderful wonderful Christmas we love you